Hey, how you doing? Sandy from Sunshine's Botanicals again. It's uh, welcome back to this series about uh, looking at plants in the garden and people leave them as weeds, but uh, hopefully can change your perspective about that and tell you a bit more about them. So this is the second in the series. We've done the stinging nettle already, so if you want to go and um, find out about that, please go and have a look at the video. And the one we're going to talk about now is something that grows very close to actually nettles, and I'll mention it in the nettle video and that is cleavers. So I'm going to go and take you to the uh, patch up in the woods and uh, show you all about cleavers. So we're back in the wooded area of um, my top of my garden and we were up here for the nettle video and I brought you back up here because it's a little bit quiet at this end of the garden. I live in a village um, not far from East Midlands Airport so you'll often hear noises so in the background so you just have to apologise for those but hopefully you can hear his birds. It's a little bit better, isn't it? Anyway, let's talk about cleavers, Gallium apparium. So Gallium means milk because they used to uh, use some of the galleons to curdle milk, making cheese. And apparium because it means literally clinging. And other people might know it as catchweed, sticky willy, goose grass and hitchhikers. Children should know this plant because guess what? It was something you used to chase your friends with, stick to them. And of course, um, you'll know when you go out uh, walking, you'll get the little burrs sticking to your clothes. So how do you ID it? Right, let's have a look at this a little bit closer. So you can tell it is cleavers by its small sort of oval shaped leaves. And they will grow in a rosette up the stem. So that means that they will grow in little circular. You see that? A rosette and there's usually about six to eight of the leaves growing and then there's a stem as it further goes up and then a little bunch will grow again. I can show you a better one. Got to be careful because of course it's raining these nettles. There you go. Can you see the little spirals as they go up? And then once it flowers you can ID it from its flowers because they're tiny little white star shaped flowers with four petals. And then, of course, as it gets bigger and it goes to seed, you get those sticky little seed burrs that everyone tries to pick off their clothes or off your animals. And it's these little hairs that are growing up the stems. They're hooked hairs this time. They're not spiky or pointed like on the nettle. They've got little hooks on them to help them grip, like Velcro, to whatever passes them by. And... At least some sometimes, because sometimes little hairs like this can cause irritation to people's skin if you've got sensitive skin, so just be careful if you're around this plant and you'll suffer from that. But of course, these hairs are very beneficial because they're little hooks. They tend to cling on to other animal plants that are around and help them grow. And they can get up to six foot, which is an incredible height considering they're quite you know, a spindly, bendy plant. So they just cling on to another plant and grow up with it. Well, it is an edible plant, and um, I can tell you a bit more about the benefits it is for us as humans. It can be cooked like any other leafy vegetable, so you can steam it, you can boil it, and use it in that way to get the benefits from it. Some people tend to put it raw in a blender with some water and make it into a juice. And uh, one interesting feature that I found out about this is it has caffeine in it. It's in a lower content level. However, it is part of the coffee family. And those little sticky burrs that stick to your clothes, people gather those and they dry them and they roast them and they make an alternative to coffee, which has a lower caffeine content. And I thought it was incredibly interesting. Juice is a coffee substitute. Now back in medieval times, this plant would have been part of any traditional kitchen or garden because they would have used this in many remedies and especially as poultices and they would have used it on skin ailments, minor wounds and also they would have used the pulp on burns and to um, help healing of any little cuts and scratches so it had a lot of good uses back in the medieval days and even today it is actually used as a slimming aid.
because it's a diuretic which means that it helps increase um, and get rid of our water retention and then so it's also by proxy that you use then to help anybody that has a urinary tract infection it helps clean the body and cleanse and help the lymphatic system so it's a diuretic it's an anti-inflammatory it's also an antispasmodic and it has quite a lot of um, benefits that's been used for traditionally and I think uh, modern day medicine is realizing its benefits too and if you've uh, seen the nettle video you'll see that it's growing with nettles and because it's obviously an anti-inflammatory you can use the juice if you squeeze it and rub it together onto nettle stings to help just reduce and take out the, the pain from the histamine and the other concoction of chemicals that have been injected into the body so that's how the medicinal benefits and uh, nutritional benefits that it can have for us humans so just as so it's beneficial to us it's also beneficial for animals because of those same properties uh, the anti-inflammatory and helping strengthen the lymphatic system and you can probably hear my chickens a little bit in the background because they love cleavers i give it to them raw and they're happily pecking away at it but also if you're a horse owner or you work with horses or you know someone that has horses you're probably already aware that um, cleavers is dried and put in um, as a, a supplement to the horse feed because it helps you know it helps their lymphatic systems and it helps the any inflammation and joints and muscles problems that they have so it's uh, beneficial to animals as well so i've just moved down towards my uh, one of my no dig beds and uh, you'll notice that i've actually put it parallel to the hedge line um, and just as mentioned in the the nettle video it's because it's under the hedge there the cleavers is growing and also the nettles are growing and these attract aphids and the aphids love to go on to the cleavers or the nettles and also um, that brings in any other beneficial insects like ladybirds and butterflies apparently caterpillars of different types of butterflies love to settle on cleavers and uh, eat that as they're nourished and so that brings in lots of great pollinators to the garden it's going to be beneficial to my vegetables that are growing in the no-dig bed and also i'm sure you're probably aware of um, cuckoo spit i know i saw it as a child and uh, it's the frothy frothiness on the on you see on the cleavers and that is the uh, the nymph of the frog hopper or the spittle bugs and what they do is they uh, ingest the sap of the cleavers and then they produce that bubbly foamy uh, substance and that helps sort of hide them and camouflage them from any predators so yeah cuckoo spit is found on the cleavers so that was cleavers it's um it's not a superfood and nutritionally high in different things like the stinging nettles but it still has its benefits both to us as humans to our animals and also, if it's not in the way, it's beneficial to keep it in the garden because we need those pollinators um, and anything that can draw away the aphids that uh, from the vegetables is fantastic. So next time you see it and it's sticking to your legs or you find it on your animals, pick off the burrs, roast them, make a coffee substitute. Might as well use what we've got to hand. So if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to know more or, or watch uh, any more videos in the series, then please subscribe and uh, click that bell icon so you'll be notified when I do upload any more videos. Thank you for watching and share if you think others would like it. And I'll see you again.